in the house of the Lord tonight, and I appreciate you, and if I lose this earpiece, just, uh, you probably won't never notice it, but at uh, any rate, just be praying for us, and be praying for Brother Danny and the family that uh, he had to take Tish off for a while, and uh, don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But anyway, we uh, miss him being here, and uh, I always look forward to coming to the house of the Lord and hear the word of God. And I know that that's what's going to happen when we get here, and I appreciate that so very much. But uh, if you will, let us bow our heads. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the privilege of being in the house of worship again. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and, God, for your love. Father, how that you've blessed us in song and in music. And, oh, God, how the, uh, the prayers of the saints have truly bombarded the windows of heaven. And, God, I ask you right now that you would give the spirit of the Lord to be in this house. That, Lord, that you would give us of your anointing, oh, God. And, Lord, that you would give us of your word. And, Lord, those things that would be pleasing unto you. And Father, we'll ever give your name all praise, honor, and glory for every touch, every blessing rendered in the precious and holy and glorious name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. Tony Robbins, a, uh, a kind of a uh, motivational speaker or whatever you would call him, I had gotten a couple of his quotes. Uh, in there, and uh, maybe I can pass these on. Some of y'all do better in business or whatever have you. But uh, one of me said, I don't believe in waiting for great feelings. I need, I need to wire myself for positively, or positivity and gratitude. I need to build a highway to both of those. And uh, I agree with that. There's something about children of God and, and our relationship with the Lord and our beginning our relationship with God. And a lot of it is dealt with, uh, especially with us Methecostals and uh, others. We are dealing a lot of times with feelings, emotions, uh, our root desires coming up to the top and, and so forth. And we, uh, you know, I, I love people that come along and when they get into the middle of something, they just say, well, I just speak my mind. Sometimes I think that mind need to be shuttered. <laughs> But here, Mr. Robbins is just declaring, I don't believe in, uh, in waiting for feelings to come. I had a man one time told me, he said, uh, and this was a young man, and I believe we were pastoring down in Miami. I pastored some and pastored others. And, uh, but this case, I was pastoring down in Miami, and in that, I met this young man and I was talking to him and we were talking to him about his soul. He was very much under conviction. You could tell the Spirit of God was dealing with him directly and he was having a hard time. And what he said to me was really took me aback because he said, I can't get saved. And I said, what in the world are you talking about? He said, well, I've rejected God so many times, I just don't get that feeling. I said, uh, son, I've, I've looked all through the Bible and I can't find that feeling. I don't know what feeling you're talking about. I just don't feel like I did the first time that I prayed through. I said, well, probably you didn't pray through. That's why you're in the state you're in today. But you don't base this thing on feelings. It's on faith. 
You believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he gave himself a living sacrifice for you and if you will accept him and believe him, you can be saved. It's just that simple. You don't need to come up with any great formula. I I saw a post and I reposted it and this cat is there and he's standing on this. I don't know what he's standing on, but he's looking and there's a roof line right out there in front of him. It looks like it's about 15 feet from him. And so they're putting calculations up there. And this cat is figuring and calculating and getting this thing just right. And so then when he gets it all figured out that he's got this just right, he jumps and he misses the building by about 10 feet. You can't go on what you think. It won't always work. And the things of God are not built on those feelings. He said, I don't believe in waiting for uh, great feelings. I need to wire myself in positivity and gratefulness. Now, positivity, we'll just talk about, I want to have a positive attitude. I want to believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's about as positive as I can get about it. I believe that. I believe that God loves me and he cares for me and whatever happens, I can turn to him at any time, day or night, and he hears my prayer. The second part of that is gratefulness. Being grateful. And that's what primarily I want to talk about tonight is being grateful. He said, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I need to to aspire to both of those, positivity and gratefulness. Now, I I see people all the time that are down in the mullet groves. Every time you see, you ever seen people that every time you see them, they got a a woe, you know, oh, woe is me, everything. I mean, I know life is hard, and I know sometimes it's very difficult but it's not bad every day. My Lord, if I lived under some of the depression that some folks live in, I'd blow my brains out with a slingshot. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stand it. I, I, don't know, I don't know what in the world. They, every time you see them, I, oh, you wouldn't believe it. And yeah, well, Hey, I heard you got $100. Yeah, but you wouldn't believe it. Well, give me the $100 and you'll go ahead and I won't believe that either. (laughs) But in that, I want things to be positive. I want to look up. I I don't, you know, I don't like looking down unless I'm walking in the woods and I know there's them biting, stinging bugs and snakes and all them other things on the ground, homie's not looking up in the sky, I can tell you now. I got my eyeballs down there looking for all them bad things going on. But the thing of it is, I want to keep a positive attitude, no matter what comes up. You ask me, how do you feel? So good, I can't hardly stand it. I mean, that's it. And you know what I mean? Tell you something, I feel that way. I thank God for it. Some of you have sicknesses and pains and aches and ailments that I can't even name or I can't even fathom in my mind. Some of it has been a marvel to medical science. But I want to keep to where that whatever goes on, I feel right. I I, I believe in that. I believe you are what you think. Amen. You think you bad, you bad. You think things are gonna, you know, you ever seen Little Abner? They had a man in Little Abner, Mammy Yoakum used to know him, and he came around, he was an uncle or something, I don't remember what it was. But when he walked around, there was a dark cloud over his head. Bolts of lightning. And that's the way he lived his life. Everything was lived under that cloud of darkness. 
that cloud of despair. Well, the thing of it is, you need to get out of that. We're going to talk about how to get out of it. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm not leaving you down here in this ditch. We need to have a positive attitude, something that we can cling to, something we can do for ourselves. We are living in an entitlement society. I'll say that again. We are living in an entitlement society. We have turned this around to where that we are entitled to life and happiness, no matter how much it costs somebody else. But see, the founding fathers had sense enough to know that that won't work. You have the ability or you have that right and the pers to pursue life and to pursue happiness. Now, you know what pursuing is? You ever pursued something? You pursue something, you're going after it. And if you are persistent in your pursuing, you will eventually catch it. That's what life is. You can sit back and say, I just don't have nothing. I can't do nothing. I am nothing. I won't ever amount to nothing. You can tell your children they're nothing. They won't ever amount to nothing. You can convince them eventually that that's who they are. But if you turn around and tell them, hey, I'm so proud of you, I can't hardly stand it. I have our, what we call our grandchildren, they're not kin to us, but they're my grandbabies anyhow. And little old Lennox, six years old, running out there on the basketball court, going, they're playing basketball tournament, and I'm over there sitting on a bench that I ought not been on. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm over there anyhow, and I'm doing the best I can, and I'm getting ready for the ball game. I, I, I don't even have a cold drink or a popcorn, nothing. And uh, so I'm getting ready to go into this ball game, and Lennox's team sitting over there on the other side, and he sees us over there. Well, <laughs> six-year-old, he just takes off, leaves the whole team standing over there on the other side, and he runs all the way around and comes over there to talk to us. <laughs> and so when he got through talking, and everybody told him, all right, get back over yonder and play. I told him, I said, Lennox, come down here a minute. I said, I want to ask you something. And when he came down there, I grabbed him right quick like, and I hugged him up. I said, if I told you I love you yet today, and they, I used to do that, and uh, finally they told us, we know you love us. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I want you to know that. I don't want you to under misinterpret anything that's going on. And I said, I am so proud of you. So proud of you. Boy can't play basketball. <laughs> I mean, he runs like me. But he gets right in there. They'll bring that ball down, he'll be right there blocking them, I mean, hey. So when they won the ball game, yeah, somebody else scored. Lennox didn't have a thing to do with it. And uh, so when it all got done, I went over there to him and I hugged him. I told him how proud I was of him. I said, boy, you play good defense. Now, I used to have an overseer. You could preach that Jesus was non-existent and, and uh, hell's gonna take over everything. And when, that, when the preacher got through, he'd walk up there and say, and, and he got behind the he'd find something in that message to, that was positive. He said, I can tell you one thing. 
That man said, I'll see you 33 times, and that was wonderful. The same thing. You tell your children they're good and they're great, they begin to start believing that. I try not to encourage him too much with the basketball, but I want him to know just how great I think he is. And that's the way God is with us. He wants to see us multiply and to, and to prosper. God wants to see things in your life that are happening that are going to be wonderful. But we have come to a point to where that we believe that we are entitled to certain things, even with God. And that's where I want to, I want to get to tonight. I'm talking about gratefulness, gratitude, coming before the Lord with a contrite and a broken spirit. I want to talk about things that God requires in our life. We always want to talk about what God is going to do for us. And let me tell you something. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. All the gold is his, all the silver is his. Everything that is belongs to God. Everything that ever was belonged to God. And let me tell you something. God is still God on the throne today and he will not shortchange his children. You start looking for the things of God and obeying God and you'll begin to see these things start happening in your life. You want to come along and talk about I got the mully grubs and I'm down, down mouth and I can't hardly get one foot in front of the other. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. You need to stop, do like Samson and shake yourself and get a hold of the Spirit of God and let God's Spirit get a hold of you and you turn yourself toward the wall and you begin to talk to Almighty God and the way you talk to him is not, God, I want you to get me out of this mess. No, you start talking to God like, God, you're the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. You are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. And let me just start lifting you up. Amen. Things will start changing in your life. Things will move. Things will start becoming different in the sight. We have become addicts and a, a believing that God is gonna just take care of everything and I don't have to do anything. We have become that part where we're guaranteed life and happiness. No pursuit, no nothing. God's just going to take care of it all. I was, had a car lot up in uh, Villa Rica, and it was down on the end of 78 Highway, and it was way down there on the other end of the earth, and I couldn't find it sometimes, but uh, the Lord blessed me there, and I was there in the office one day and this young man come, I saw him come walking down the road, walked up, walked in my office. And we began to talk and uh, he said, uh, I said, uh, can I help you? He said, yeah, I've come uh, to get an offering. I said, an offering? Uh, uh, us preachers, we don't give offerings. We take offerings. <laughs> and I said, uh, why are you talking about an offering? He said, well, I'm serving God. I said, you're, you're, or he said, I'm living for God. I said, you're living for God. He said, yeah. I said, well, where do you work? Oh, I don't work anywhere. I said, you don't work. I said, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? No, no, nothing wrong with me. I just don't work. I believe the scripture. I said, I believe the scripture too, but the Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. Especially around here. And I said, uh, what, what are you talking about an offering? He said, well, he said, uh, the Lord said if I just get out here and go to people to just start giving in to me and start blessing me and, and I wouldn't have to do anything and I could just go on about my way. I said, son, you need to turn over at night when you start getting that bean dream and see if you can get it on the other side 
because you're missing it on this side. It doesn't work like that, son. You get up and you go work. Now, if you're going to live for God, what are you doing? What, what is it exactly that you're doing for God? Well, I'm just out here telling people uh, about Jesus, and, and they give me offerings. I said, uh, so your message is you give me an offering, and I'll tell you something about Jesus. I said, son, you're missing the ball game. Oh, no, I, I've, I've got, I've, no, I said, no, you're missing the ball game, son. You got to get out here and do something. You find you a, a job to do for God if you want to work for God, and that's what you want to do. You want to be full time? Don't ask anybody for anything. I said, when Paul went out, and he was the greatest missionary there was, when Paul went out and got in a place, he stopped long enough to make some tents. I said, that's called a job. That's called supplying. And what Paul said, I never asked anything from anybody. I said, now you want to make yourself a Paul? Get out here and find you a job. You get yourself prepared. Then you go out and you find out what God wants you to do. And then you do it with all of your might. And don't hold back. We lose in there our thoughts about what it is to live for God, what it is to praise God, what it is to receive of God. We have become great receivers, but not much on giving. You want something from God? Start giving God something. He don't need anything you have. He don't need your money. He don't even need your life. God doesn't need anything from you, but he loves you and he wants to bless you. But you've got to put something in the pot. And what you put in the pot is you begin by being grateful. Thank God, amen. Now boy, this is good, isn't it? Amen. The Bible said in Matthew 5, in verses 2, it began. We are teachers. We teach. We teach ourselves. We teach our families. We speak words of hope and life. We speak all of these things to bring about a desired result. In this particular scripture, Jesus said, and he opened his mouth and taught this multitude saying. He opened his mouth and taught them. Now this is what Christ is teaching and what he is talking about. We have an idea that all I have to do is name it, claim it, and everything's gonna be fine. I don't have any problem with the power of God. I don't have any problem with God reaching down and healing your body. I don't have any problem with God blessing you in your finance. I don't have a problem with God reaching over there and mending a life or a, or a marriage <coughs> or something like that. I do have a problem with God buying you a new Cadillac. But the Bible said here, we are teaching our children, children what we want them to learn. We're teaching them by our actions. We're teaching them by our words, mostly. Every now and then, we give them a little sound advice. Don't do that. That's about it. But here, the Bible said he had a multitude of people there, and he began to open his mouth, and he began to teach them. And the Bible said the first thing he taught them is blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wait a minute. I thought this Christianity I was supposed to be living on the mountaintop. Let me go tell you what you do. You go by and you ask Brother Ricky, how you doing Brother Ricky? Come on, let's go play some basketball.
That's not happening. He's got a problem. I don't have a problem with God dealing with that problem. But the problem I have is when the only thing that we can talk to God about is that problem. We come to God and the first thing we do is, Lord, it's me again, Lord. I got another problem. And we begin to express that problem to God. You ever have a person that you know and every time you turn around, they're on your doorstep? And what is it that, they, that they're doing? They want something. You ever had some of those people? They'll never speak to you. They wouldn't, they wouldn't talk to you if you were fixing to step over a cliff. They wouldn't say, hey, I wouldn't do that. They won't say a word, not a mumbling word, nothing, until they want something. When they want something, oh, let me tell you. Oh, they're the sweetest thing since sliced bread. I mean, with honey on it. I mean, this boys, they are good people. And they love you so much, and they just appreciate you. And all your youngins named Bill and George, oh, they were named Sue and Mary. Okay, well, anyway, they just love your family, everything about you. But the only th problem they have is once they get what they want, they never come back. You can see them on the street. Hey, how's Bill doing? Wouldn't speak to you if your name was Jesus. Don't know you. What happens after about, well, me, I'm a little slower than most people. About 15, 20 times of that, I start catching on. What happens when you keep doing that over and over? After a while, you will dread seeing them coming around. Now we're serving not a man called Jesus. We're serving a God named Jesus. You hearing me? We're not serving an individual out here. We're serving one who is an almighty God who took in his own hand and slung the stars in the heaven. I'm talking about the one that spoke life into this world and breathed into your nostrils the breath of life and we've become a living soul. I'm talking about that God. I'm talking about the one who went to Calvary and we're talking about that today, about how wonderful that blessing is and the consummation of that hope that we have in Christ Jesus is the fact that he came out of that tomb on the third day just like he said he would. That's the one I'm talking about. And when we come before him and we come in his presence, we don't come to him begging up. First, we enter into his courts, the Bible said, or we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We began to magnify him because he is worthy. You're looking for something from him or somebody else. If you're looking for something from God, then let him know he's God. When I talked the first thing, I said, we come with a broken and a contrite spirit. We come in before God knowing that he is God and that he has made us and not we ourselves. We are his creature. We are his sheep. And he is the shepherd of us all. And praise God, when you start looking towards him, begin to praise him. How many have ever just got in? I know some of y'all go to uh, these women's meetings and men's meetings and, and all these other kinds of things. And we get in here, we sing the songs. And sometimes we sing a song and it just... Everything changes. It's not a song being sung anymore. It's not just us up here trying to see how good we can carry one note because that's about all I got. I'm looking for the rest of them. But we are trying to do the best we can. And all of a sudden, it seems like everything goes together. Everything begins to gel within us. And all of a sudden, it stops being a song and it becomes a worship. 
We're no longer singing words on paper or music as is played by our wonderful musicians, but we're singing unto God. And we're beginning to lift up our hands and begin to worship him and let him come down and spirit, his spirit and begin to minister into our lives. Do you want to see a change in your life? Let God's spirit come into your life. How does he come into your life? Through your praise. You can name it and claim it and nail it on the wall and it won't make one bit of difference. But the day that you turn your face unto him and begin to lift him up and to begin to exalt him and to praise him and be thankful and grateful for all that you have. Let me tell you something. Every one of us in here, we have problems. I have a hill that's killing me. And that's the only thing I got hurting, so I'm pretty good. But we've got problems. God has an answer for that problem. You ever get into a spiritual, you ever been in the altar and begin to pray and you begin to exhaust yourself? I'm not talking about get tired. I'm talking about empty yourself into the presence of God. You begin to talk to God instead of to the people around you and the beautiful words and prayer that you're trying to say and do but all of a sudden it becomes a prayer from the heart and one that God through his spirit is beginning to direct. And you may just take off and start letting the heavenly angels come down and the spirit of God and begin to minister into your life and you might start back talking to the, to the spirit of God, letting God communicate with God and all that the things in your life and all of a sudden the things of God and God is the things of your life Things change when you start doing things like that. Opportunities are there for you to stop. You may tell you what happens. You forget all about your aches and your pains. Oh yeah. You might just be talking about I can't hardly put one foot in front of the other. Quit claiming it. I can't hardly make it one more step. Stop claiming it. And turn your face towards God and let him start blessing in your life. And let me tell you what will start happening. You'll see things start changing. You can't put one foot in front of the other. You'll be up that aisle right yonder about to look like a F-18 going up through there and an F-16 coming back down this side. Hey, don't you count God out. Things will start happening in your life. And when you get through and everything's over with and as somebody comes over to you and hugs your neck and tells you what a wonderful service we had, you say, yeah, but if I could just get one foot in front of the other. You gotta stop. You gotta start learning the things of God. We come to God with a grocery list everything we need. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with bringing your petitions before the Lord. There's nothing wrong within the name of Jesus. I'm gonna see a victory. But praise God, don't start it within the name of Jesus. I'm gonna see a victory. Start it with, yes, but God is the God of all ages. Praise God, he is my sword and my shield, he is my buckler, he's my high tower, he's that place that I can get in and nobody can get to me. I can find peace and I can find love. Why, because I found the spirit in the presence of God and I know that he lives, hallelujah, and I'm gonna start worshiping him and praise him and all through all of this, let me tell you, I've gotten into it before and forgot all about the grocery list. No grocery list. Come out of there knowing that everything's taken care of. I've told you time and time again of things in my life. I can't tell you nothing about your life. You have to tell that. But I can tell you about my life. I know how that God has delivered me. I know how that he has reached down and how that he has touched my life and how that in the middle of all of it, I didn't even know what happened. 
I don't know how he did it. And you want me to tell you what I found out? Don't try to figure it out. Amen. Just know he did it and began to praise him. You start lifting him up and magnifying, glorifying his name, you'll see things start changing in your life as well. Things will change. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You don't have to worry about it. That's a promise from God. That's in his word. He didn't just put that in there to have something for a filler. He meant that. You don't have to worry about it. You start praising him. I sit here and I, I began to thank him. And there's times when I used to be on the road and had all hours of the night. Lord of mercy, the God had to be with Doyle and myself and now with Tommy out there on the road. And uh, that's a dangerous place out there. The enemy's out there on every corner. He's trying to set you up all the time. There are people that seems like they are intent on trying to kill you. Best you can do. But what I would find myself doing is I'd crank the radio up. Somebody come on there singing some of them old songs. I'd be singing right along there most of the words that I knew. And uh, I'd be singing right along with them. We'd be rejoicing. I'd be riding in that truck. And I know that God had to be there with me because that old truck would be doing 100 miles an hour. And I would be just happy. And I would be wide awake. I didn't have to worry about a thing. I knew that everything was right with God. And God, if I go home and be with you tonight, that'll be just all right too. But everything is okay. And you start getting into that praise and worship of God, you'll see things start changing. I'd have to go, whoa, let me back her down a little bit, Lord. Back her down just a little bit. I want to thank you just a little bit more. But let's slow this down just a little bit. This old Chevrolet has just about had it. We forget that he is God. We have his access to his glory for we are made in his image and in his likeness. We're different than anything that was ever made. Brother Clark, what do you think about the dinosaurs? Don't think about them very much. That was way before my time. What do you think about the time span? I don't know. That's with God. He said a day with him is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. I don't worry about it. Well, do you think we came from a monkey? That's entirely up to you. I didn't. I knew my daddy. I knew my granddaddy. I even knew John for a short period of time. Of course, I wasn't two years old when he died. John Smith. He wasn't no monkey. I've seen pictures of him. And if you think Dave Smith was a monkey, I wouldn't tell him that. Amen. So I don't know where down that tree line somebody got stepped out of that tree and walked over and said, hello, my name is Bill. <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where he, where he came from. <laughs> but all I know is I believe in the creation of God. I believe he created everything that has ever been created. We are losing hundreds of species every day. I believe the Bible said there's no new thing on the earth. There's no new bugs. You might find one, but he's not a new one. You just never saw him. 
there's no new rats because I never look at them long enough to see if they're new or not. I can be in on top of the whatever. But I don't, I don't worry about all those things. As far as I'm concerned, God made them. And during that span of time, God got rid of them. What about all the canyons and all the things? I don't know. That's things I don't have to worry myself about. Only thing I have to worry myself about is am I serving God? Am I living for the Lord Jesus Christ? Garrett came by a while ago and shared with me a blessing. He had his dad there, and while, he was, while we were singing, he had recorded his dad singing. And I got to share in that. Wonderful blessing. All I need to do is when the trumpet sounds for Richard, all I need to know is that I'm ready. And how am I going to know I'm ready? Because I'm praising him. I never cease to be thankful. I'm always thankful to God for everything that he has ever done. I don't know about all the other things of science. They can come up with everything they want to come up with. I listen to some of these people and they go, okay, this is a fact. I go, that's one of the, one of the worst suppositions. That's one of them supposed to be. That's supposed to be the truth. It's infallible. It's the truth. They don't know what the truth is because they've never met the man called Jesus. They don't know him. And I thank God every day. We have needs that are in this house, and if I asked you right now to raise that hand towards heaven and tell me which one of you have one, people would stand all over this house and begin to express what they need from God. What I want us to do is I want us to begin to praise God. Just start praising him. You start praising him, you start glorifying him, you start lifting him up, all these other things are going to be added to you. You don't have to look for them. You don't have to worry about them. He knows how many hairs you have on top of your head, that pointy little head that you have. He knows exactly what's there. Then that little bit that's on the inside of it too. So you don't have to worry about it. God's got it all under control. All you need to do is start bringing it to him. Bring your cares unto the Lord, but bring them with praise, with supplication. Begin to magnify his name. I would like for you to bow your heads. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you that, Lord, that you are a God that cares. You are one that has, Lord, made us, not we ourselves, but you have put us here in this place. God, you've given us the peace to know that you are God and that you are the blesser of your people. And God, that's my aunt calling me and I thought, sorry, I thought I turned that off. About, about my Uncle Doyle. And Father, I thank you that you are a God that sees us Lord, that you understand everything about us. And God, I pray that you would receive blessing in this house. Lord, it's from our hearts we are beginning to magnify you. God, you see our needs. Lord, there are many in this place. God, you have the power to lift up, Lord, to make whole. And God, we claim that in Jesus' loving name because, Lord, we love you. And God, we praise you. And we magnify you and we know that you have everything of ours under control. Master, do bless in this house. Do bless your people, dear God. And Father, we'll ever give you na your name, all praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Does anybody have an announcement? Don't forget the flyers. Nona said, come up here and get the flyers.